Welcome to this video tutorial on Tina TI, the free spice simulator from Texas Instruments. In this video, you'll learn some advanced capabilities of Tina TI's waveform viewer to help you make more of your simulation results. In part one of this video series, you saw how Tina TI makes it easy to customize your graphs and export them as graphics files. You can add notations to the graphs in three different ways. The first way is to simply add some text to the graph. Select the text tool and a box pops up where you can type some text. When you have what you want, click on the check mark and a text box is placed on the graph. You can move the box any place you'd like. You can add a pointer from a text box to a curve to make it clear what the text applies to. You can automatically label a curve by using the Auto Label tool, saving you the time of actually typing the text. By double-clicking any text box, you can edit the text. For some graphs, it might be easier to label things simply by adding a legend. Click the Legend tool and place the legend wherever you'd like on the graph. In the first part of this series, you learned that you had to have a metering point in the schematic to see a graph of that node. What if you forgot to put one on a node you wanted to look at? That's where the Probe tool comes in. Before you can use the Probe tool, you need to have the Save All Analysis Results box checked in the Analysis Options screen. Now when you run a transient analysis, you'll see the curves for the points you connected to metering points. But now, say you want to look at the output of the instrumentation amplifier. Using the probe tool, you can return to the schematic and click on any marked node to add a curve to your results. Now you can see how VDAC is amplified through the instrumentation amplifier. This is a switching power circuit with several different nodes being monitored. Using Tina TI's post processor, you can gain more insight into how the circuit is functioning. First, notice that you can access many additional waveforms from the analysis. Instead of using the probe tool, you can select node voltages and currents here to add in your graph. Let's add the current through L1. Now you can see the current through L1. If you zoom into the latter part of the curve, where the current is pretty stable, and select that curve, you can then use the process averages function to see the average and RMS values of the visible portion of the curve. Note that this is in a text box, and if you select the check mark, then you can place this text on the graph. Sometimes you want to compare or see the difference between two signals. Here are two filters to compare, a Butterworth and a Chebyshev realization of the same basic filter requirements. By clicking the More button, you can do math on the available waveforms to create a new waveform. Using the outputs defined in the schematic, select the Chebyshev output and click on the down arrow to place it in the equation line editor. You can then either type a slash to signify dividing or select it from the built-in functions. Select the Butterworth output and bring it down as well. This defines the new waveform. Name the waveform by entering a name in the new function name box, diff, and then click create. Now add this curve to the outputs by clicking add. Now you can see how the amplitude responses of the two filters differ.
There is also a more powerful equation editor which uses a Pascal-like syntax to define equations and functions which might require more than a single line of code. See the TINA Advanced Topics Manual from DesignSoft, available at www.tina.com to learn more about advanced editing. TINA TI's Waveform Viewer has a lot of useful features, which we've explored in two videos. If you haven't seen part one of this series, make sure you do. Thanks for watching this video tutorial on TINA TI.